Welcome to another edition of Online Sunday School brought to you by New, New Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Sister Elaine and I welcome you and I thank you for your ongoing support. I'd like to uh, give a shout out to our pastor, Sandra L. Dawson, uh, for uh, Sandra R. Dawson for this wonderful vision and place and also our Sunday School leadership, which consists of Deacon Veronica Dawson and Sister Joyce Mason. So, we're going to continue on that faith train, so we want to hop on board in just a second. Our lesson today is going to be, uh, oh, faith of a centurion. Hold on one second, people. We're moving ahead to next week, but we're going to be talking about faith of a centurion. And uh, it's a great lesson, and it's going to hopefully open our eyes as to what uh, another aspect of faith is. Now, let's let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to study your word, uh, to be good stewards of anything that you provide for us. We are thankful for all blessings, all mercies. We ask for special prayers for those that may be in need. Um, we hope that we gain something from this lesson take away that we can share with others. We ask all this in your wonderful son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Like I said, this lesson is going to be a good one. It is always, um, lately we've been dealing with familiar passages, but that's okay. Faith of a centurion. Our focal scriptures will be coming out of Luke chapter seven, verses one through 10. The parallel scripture is Matthew eight, five through 13. The devotional reading is coming out of Zechariah. And our lesson faith is trust in Jesus to sustain your faith. Um, I believe that lesson focus is wrong. I believe we want to call out on Jesus. Now, our key verse, I'll read the King James Version. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say a word and my servant shall be healed. Three questions to consider today. What motivated the centurion to turn to Jesus? Second, why did Jesus say that the centurion demonstrated great faith? 
And lastly, why did the centurion send the Jewish elders to Jesus for his request? Now, something's bothering me. I want to go back and I want to give us the correct lesson focus. And the correct lesson focus is have faith to call out to Jesus. Now, let's continue on to our lesson background. Um, the author is Luke. Uh, last week, we dealt with the, um, a, a, a lesson from Luke. And this book is one that he writes in a chronological order of Jesus' public ministry. Talks about the miracles that were powered by the Holy Spirit and about Jesus' teaching. And he did some teaching in the synagogues. Now, at this point, we know because Jesus had been healing people, the word about him got out. And multitudes, large crowds were following him for the healing. And they were begging him not to leave their town. So Luke's writing shows Jesus that in a way that, uh, and more than the other gospels, shows how the human side of Jesus, but it also shows that he's divine and that he had a special love and concern for humanity. Today's lesson takes place, uh, just like last week, in the town of Capernaum. Here's our word cloud for today. The words you see, heal, love, centurion, Capernaum elders, worthy, and faith. Hello, Sister Singleton, uh, Sister Williams, and Sister Baker. Thank you for joining us. Our lesson aims, let's identify the reason for Jesus's amazement. Then we want to brainstorm ways to exhibit faith like that of the centurion. And then lastly, discover the factors that influence the centurion's faith in Christ to heal his servant. Our lesson is broken into two sections today. The first being the centurion's request, which is Luke 7, 1 through 5. And then the centurion's humility, which is Luke 7, 6 through 10. Let me begin with our scriptures. Luke 7, 1 through 5. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There is a, a centurion's servant whom his master valley, valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built a synagogue. Now, Jesus is in Capernaum as we, we, um, we established and People were coming from all over to witness the miracles and to listen to his teachings. Now, let's set the scene. We have these elders that come to Jesus on behalf of a centurion. A centurion is a Roman soldier, high-ranking soldier. That means he was in. He had uh, probably a hundred men that he he um, was uh, took charge of, but his servant was deathly ill. Now, what's ironic about this is that this is a Roman soldier. And then we have the Jews, where the Romans oppressed the Jews. But these elders tell Jesus that this man loves the nation, so he does not oppose. The other thing we find we should take note of is that uh, when Romans had servants or slaves, they didn't care about them, their welfare. But this centurion really cared for his servant. And so he showed true love toward his servant. Um, according to Matthew 8, 6, it says that the servant was paralyzed and was suffering terribly. So the centurion sends to Jesus the elders thinking because he's Roman that maybe uh, if he sent the elders, it would be better as a representative to talk to Jesus because he felt maybe Jesus would not want to talk to him. And but he did. And Jesus was uh, amazed by him wanting to to have this this thought, this request. So he was also deserving, they felt, because he was wealthy and he helped build a synagogue. So he truly was not a foe of the Jews. Let's continue with now his humility. And that's going I'm going to start with six through eight. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. 
That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the, the, that he be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. So the centurion was, he didn't feel worthy enough that Jesus to come to his house. So he sent some people to, to stop him, but he had the faith and he understood authority. So Jesus listened to those elders and he was moved, remember, by his request. Now, the centurion's message to Jesus was that he was not worthy, but he was showing humility, extreme humility, not out of human need and not out of, but out of human need, but not out of his authority. See, he explained that he understood how authority worked. He understands how the world works, but he was he under also understood that Jesus had ultimate authority and he knew that Jesus could heal his man he knew that Jesus could heal his servant remotely by just saying a word let's continue on with 9 and 10 hello uh, lady dawson how are you when jesus heard this he was amazed at him and turning to the crowd following him he said i tell you I have not found such great faith, even in Israel. Then the two, then the men who were had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. See, what was remarkable about this, this was a Roman centurion, a soldier, a Gentile. Now, this is probably one of the first stories of Jesus now uh, dealing with Gentiles. But he had faith. He was not Jewish. He was Gentile but he recognized the authority. He had heard about Jesus. He knew the miracles and the things that were taking place. So he knew that he had the power and the authority to heal, that he also knew that he could re heal remotely. He was amazed. Jesus was amazed by the measure of the centurion's faith. So all I want to know is, do you have centurion's faith? Can we have faith like the centurion? So Jesus declared to the crowd, look, you know, he had never seen such faith like this. He was happy. Now, uh, it was he was amazed. So when the centurion's friend returned to the house, the servant was healed. Now, that's nothing but the power of God. A couple of supporting scriptures. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's a true example of the centurion. He heard about Jesus. He heard about Jesus and he had faith. He had never seen Jesus, but he had heard of the things. And he was a Gentile. He was not Jewish. That's a, that was amazing to Jesus. And in Acts 10, 28, he said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Now, this is Peter. Now, at one time, Peter did. He associated with the Gentiles. And we know one time Peter called himself shying away because he didn't want the Jewish leaders to see him. But this story right here, this passage comes from when he's dealing with Cornelius. And Cornelius also was a Roman soldier. And he had faith in Jesus. He had. Yes, uh, Lady Dawson, I pray for that faith. We want to have that type of faith. So for life application, how can we transfer what we just read in those scriptures in regards to the centurion and his faith? Well, we can emulate the centurion because he showed humility. He was humble. He said he was not worthy. He forgot the fact that he was a Roman soldier, a high ranking soldier. So he didn't feel that he was, uh, what do you want to say, entitled. And then he had faith. He knew that Jesus could heal and love the love that he showed for his servant. We need to know that the faith gives God room that to move and to heal in big ways. Know that faith gives God room to move and heal in big ways. And then to continually to call out to Jesus. And lastly, have faith that is not just 
you know, personal, your own faith, but for others. We need to share our faith. That is how we bring people to Christ. They see what, what's going on in our life. And to know that there is a great reward at the end for having trust and faith. So in summary, this lesson focused on the faith of the centurion who believed that Jesus could heal from a distance. That means he did remote healing. Another example of Jesus's willingness and ability to do great and mighty things for those who turn to him in faith. The centurion turned to Jesus for faith. And so it also challenges believers to have great faith and then lastly, put that faith in action. What do you do with your faith? Well, here's our closing thought. Have centurion faith. Go ahead, write it down. Centurion faith. And how would you describe your faith? Think about it. We're talking about this, week, this month, the measure of faith. How do you measure your faith? Do you have centurion faith? What type of faith do you have? Well, that concludes the overview this week. And you know, we're going to continue on our faith train. So we need to hop on board next week, next Thursday, as we talk about the faith of a woman who loved Jesus. And uh, those scriptures are coming out of Luke. And our devotional reading is Romans. And the lesson focuses, how do your actions express your faith and love? Uh, I hope you enjoyed what we, we went over today, and I hope this prepares you for Sunday. And as always, make sure that you share, like, and, you know, please comment. That helps us so we can grow together. And until we meet again, stay blessed. Yeah.